a massive market, a huge opportunity, and one that through a lot of hard work has to be based on trust to take full advantage of the, the strong brand that we have as perhaps the supply chain that has the greatest integrity and the focus on the highest quality anywhere in the world. And that is a credit to each of you and the many thousands of other Victorians that you represent as delegates to this forum. Uh, that engagement, uh, the most recent example of that extension of course is some $16 million that we've provided to, to get more agricultural, more product into more food and fibre into overseas markets, not only China, uh, but noting that that's one of the most prospective markets and already one of the biggest. And that $16 million investment is again a partnership based on the dialogue and investment based on the dialogue that we so value between our government, its agencies and the VFF. There are lots of other priorities that you have made very clear to us. Uh, for instance, the $200 million Agriculture Infrastructure and Jobs Fund announced back in 2016 uh, with some linkage to the uh, sale of the lease to the Port of Melbourne uh, without the advocacy of the VFF, without the dialogue and discussions we so often have, that simply would not have occurred and the projects that that fund has been able to support and leverage into a much bigger investment than a mere $200 million uh, is again another example of how important working together is. Whether it's investing in better technology, uh, better freight connections, uh, the services that rural and regional communities rely upon so heavily, hospitals and schools, uh, all those basics and fundamentals right through to the most high-tech innovation. Uh, we are proud to have, have stood with communities over these last three and a half years to have made strong and consistent investments and we'll be pleased over these next three months, four months, to outline an equally optimistic and positive agenda for the future. Now, I did say I wouldn't brag, but I can't possibly have a conversation uh, with, uh, with anybody in rural and regional Victoria without talking about roads. And it's an example of, an example of uh, the fact that we have listened and understood that there are big challenges in our road network. But it's not just what we've done, I put it to you that it is how it has been done as well that makes a big difference. Uh, strong investments in the first three budgets, very strong investments, bringing some consistency to funding when it had been up and down for a long time. This year, some $941 million, the biggest ever investment in rural and regional road network. Uh, some of that will be funding for state roads, some of it will be an opportunity for some partnerships with local government. That's a big number and it's going to deliver enormous benefits. Beyond that though, how it's been done, I would hope speaks to you about the approach we take. I took the view that if the people who ran our regional and rural road maintenance and building program had to use that road network, they might well do a much better job maintaining it. That's why we've set up uh, Regional Roads Victoria to be based right here in this great city, bringing jobs to uh, Ballarat, but also with an outpost network in every part of the state, making sure that that new administrative body has the practical experience and the exposure to these issues and challenges. I think that's going to deliver much better outcomes. A large amount of investment, but doing it in, I think, a thoughtful way so that there's that daily feedback. I'm very confident that rural and regional communities will give to those people, as they do to me, very much active feedback about the need to do even better when it comes to our road network. Uh, Ross Johns uh, from the uh, Grains Group uh, made a comment, I think, which is very important, because it's not just about the fact that in so many places roads are the, best, the only form of public transport. It's about the freight cars, of course. It's about productivity and economic activity. But he made the point that Farmers, quote, not only need roads to get goods to market, they need roads to grow our safe, sustainable and reliable agricultural products as well. It's as much about the production process as it is just a freight and logistics task. And that's why, and of course we'll have more to say about roads in the coming weeks and months, but this is a big investment, it's a big switch up, as well as doing it in a very local fashion, I think it's going to deliver fantastic results. Now, whilst I'm optimistic and confident about the future and whilst there's a lot to celebrate and to be very proud of, everyone in this room, I think, can say that. Uh, we do know that there are some who are doing it very tough and that there are some very significant challenges 
that we will all need to be honest and frank about. Whether it's uh, those who are currently on some definitions affected by drought, others that are close to that, uh, the ongoing challenge for our dairy sector, uh, and others who are dealing with just the, the pace of change and some of the uncertainty that markets and industry uh, sectors are facing, not just in Victoria, but across our country and indeed across our world. It is important that the government be activists, be interventionists, be prepared to do things that governments have perhaps not done in the, done in the past. Uh, and I, no one ever enjoys having to go to a community that is in real stress. But the job that we have to do is to listen, to learn, and to make sure that we respond in appropriate terms. I can recall being over in the Wimmera Mallee and announcing packages of support, not only new infrastructure for water, but rec water as well, so the communities could have that sense of uh, connection. Uh, announcing free kinder and other government supports, things that no government had ever done before in response to terrible drought. We've, I've been to so many bushfire affected communities as well over a long period of time. You can't just provide the same support every time you've got to listen and adapt and change, and sometimes those challenges are best in fact, always those challenges are best dealt with by listening to those who live through those challenges each and every day. That again is another reason why this dialogue, this discussion, this partnership is so important to us. Now, I did say that I uh, would make uh, a couple of important announcements. The health of our regional communities is very important to me, and not only given that's where I come from, but as a former health minister, um, a, a very challenging job, but one that I enjoyed because it was just so relevant to uh, so many, every single Victorian and so many different parts of our community, particularly rural and regional communities. Whilst rainfall and market changes and, and other challenges are very real and, and do, do weigh heavily upon farming communities, upon agricultural, regional, rural communities, sometimes the farmer looks after everything but him or herself. Wellbeing, support, uh, that sort of resilience, the notion that you're not on your own, the notion that you can be supported to take care of yourself is very important to me and very important, I think, to rural and regional communities. We know, sadly, that the rate of depression, anxiety and suicide are all tragically much higher in rural and regional communities than they are in metropolitan parts of the state. Sometimes difficult to talk about that, but we need to be honest about that total inequity and then do something profound about it. We were very proud to reinstate and to secure funding for the National Centre for Farmer Health in the very first budget when we came to office. It had been, I know I promised it wouldn't be partisan, but that, that funding had been, well it had not been supported by our predecessors. I don't know why they made that decision, that was a decision that they made, I can't change that. All I can do is back those projects that I know work and that I know are valuable. And that's why we made a commitment to reinstate funding. But I'm not just about repairing the damage that others do. I am about making sure that we leave the place better than we found it and that we set great partnerships like the National Centre for Farm and Health. We set them up for the future. That's why I'm so very proud today to be able to announce that a re-elected Labor government will secure funding and provide an extra $4 million to the National Centre for Farm and Health because I think the care, the research, the programs that are delivered out of this centre change lives and save lives. It is so very valuable, so very important and if we are given that great gift, that great honour of being in government for a second term, we won't just continue to do more of the same good work we will in fact make the National Centre for Farm and Health better than it has ever been. Uh, hopefully that is something welcomed by rural and regional communities. I'm also very pleased to uh, talk about one other issue that is a, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, all of you know that I've been a very strong supporter of uh, free trade agreements where they can be negotiated on fair and equitable terms, where they are clearly in our best interests. And I believe that the China, uh, Korea, uh, and, and other, other agreements that we have been able to negotiate as a nation with those markets have been very much in our interest. And it's now up to us. It's why we have 22 offices around the world. It's why we travel to China and other places. It's why we work so very hard to take advantage of that market access. 
Uh, so I'm not for any, in any sense, uh, anything other than a strong supporter of trade. But free trade agreements need to be balanced, they need to be measured, and they need to recognise that not everything can be on the table. Not everything can be on the table. I'm aware of some uh, following uh, recent uh, agreements between the EU and Japan, uh, a new economic agreement they're calling it, that may well provide some really significant barriers to those who produce feta cheese, for instance, those who produce uh, Prosecco. Uh, there's lots of different players, lots of different enterprises in our primary production sector that could be negatively impacted by, I think, wrong, totally incorrect claims of ownership over some of those terms. I want to make it very clear to you today uh, that we will continue to make our position very clearly understood by the Commonwealth Government. Uh, these sorts of changes are not in Victorian primary producers' interests. They are wrong and they should not be agreed to by the National Government. There's always compromise in a free trade agreement, of course, that's the nature of any uh, agreement. But it shouldn't be making changes that serve no useful purpose other than to lock us out of markets, cause enormous regulatory burden and additional cost, and potentially compromise the fine produce and the fine work that so many across <coughs> our food and fibre sector are so well known for. Just finally, I want to talk a little bit about uh, another area of policy where it is very important that there be simply no doubt at all as to our intentions. When we came to government, we had made it clear uh, our position prior to government was that there ought to be a moratorium on all uh, gas and gas drilling uh, across our, our state, regardless of the method. Then we should have a process and then we should make a decision about uh, how we would treat unconventional gas and indeed conventional gas. We then legislated because we listened to farming communities, to those who were concerned about the environment, which are essentially <coughs> the same thing because farming communities know and understand that you can't separate the economy and the uh, environment. They are the same thing. We listened to so many people across Victoria and we introduced and got the support and passed a ban, a permanent and lasting ban on fracking. We think that is a very important position to have taken. I spoke earlier on just briefly about our good name, our reputation, the fact that we are known as a high quality uh, market, a market that produces only the best quality produce. Supply chain integrity, matters of biosecurity, <coughs> Matters of environmental management are critically important to us retaining that brand and continuing to use it to get more product into current markets and to open up opportunities in new markets. There will be no change to that policy under a Labor government because we are not going to smash up our prime agricultural land. Uh, that puts far too much at risk. There is a process in relation to conventional uh, and that is an expert-led process, uh, not a political-led process. I just wanted to remind people of that commitment uh, and also restate it for the future. It is the law of our state, and so it should be. And again, that is another example that without one of the most powerful coalitions in recent memory, 